Okay, so now that we've gone through the trouble of making a single box fall through the world, uh, let's have some fun and create a whole bunch of boxes falling into the world. So let's think about how we're going to do that. Go back to our code, and probably the best way to do it, well, first the best thing to do is uh, let's comment out this trace function because I really don't want to be filling up my debug output with falling crane information now that we can see it. And our strategy is probably going to be a little something like this. Let's say, I don't know, every few frames, add a random crate to the world. And we actually probably want to do this until a certain number of crates have been added. So what is that going to look like? It's probably going to look a little something like this. I'm going to create a member variable that is number of frames until we launch another crate. And this will be a variable, we'll call it next crate in. It can be an integer. Just uh, we'll start off with next crate equal to zero. So we create a crate almost immediately. And then in our new frame event, I think probably our code's gonna look something like this. If next crate in minus minus is less than or equal to zero. And our world, and count the number of bodies in our world using, basically we can use m body count, is less than, I'm just gonna pick a number here like 80. We will add a random crate to the world. Add a random crate. Now this function doesn't exist yet, but with not a whole lot of work, we can change our add a crate function to do that. Basically all this involves is reusing this function and where we've got all these nice hard-coded um, numbers, we'll change it to random numbers. Probably we're going to need some sort of create a random number function. I'm sure you have one of your own that you like. Here's uh, just a random one that we can use. We'll call it random int. We'll take uh, as arguments a low vowel and a high vowel. It will return an integer. And basically, it will return a random number between low vowel and high vowel. And we will make it inclusive. So if low vowel is less than or equal to high vowel, we can return. And basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to return the low value plus some random number within the range of uh, high val to low val, meaning I'll return low val plus math.floor of math.random times high val minus low val plus one. I gotta add that plus one to make it inclusive. And uh, otherwise here we'll just throw an error. I suppose alternately, you could just be smart enough to swap low vowel and high vowel. Up to you. And then we will change this add a crate function to add a random crate. And basically what we can do is let's look at the things we probably want to change. We can change the size of the box. We can probably change the position that it appears in so they don't all appear in the exact same spot when they fall into the world and uh, we can change the angle. That's probably good enough. So uh, instead of 25, we'll make this a random int between, say, I don't know, 5 and 40. We can do the same thing, random int between 5 and 40. So this will create all sorts of fun random rectangles. Let's make it appear anywhere between, say, I don't know, 15 and 5. 30, somewhere to make sure it generally won't fall off the right hand side of the screen. And uh, we'll make sure it falls in from the top, so this will probably be 
a random int somewhere between, say, I don't know, negative 100 and negative 10. And then our angle, let's make this a uh, random int between 0 and 360. Now there's probably one more thing I need to change in this function. Uh, you'll remember that I turned falling crate into a member variable of the hello box world class so that we could track it later in our enter frame listener. Technically this will still work. I'll be creating lots of new falling crates and every time one appears I'm just going to sort of reassign the falling crate variable to it. But I think this is kind of misleading and sloppy so let's uh, let's go and uh, make this a uh, local variable again just to kind of emphasize that that's really what we're doing. So let's see. I'm going to delete this member variable. We'll go back down here and we'll make this a little local variable called falling crate. It'll be a B2 body. I'll remove the underscores. This pretty much works the same as before. The only difference is that my falling crate variable doesn't persist outside of this add a random crate function. Um, note that this doesn't mean my crate goes away. The world still has a copy of of this crate, it still has the B2 body stored, and it will continue to move it around and bounce it off things the way uh, the way a crate normally would. It just means if I wanted to access the crate, I don't have a variable to do it directly. I could do it a number of different ways. I could basically ask the world object to iterate through all of its bodies, and I can access the crate bodies that way, or maybe I could create a member variable that's an array, and I could push all these falling crates into that array. I'm not doing that because basically I'm not going to care about tracking these crates later. For a real application, I might want some way of doing that. Um, while I'm at it, I've realized that I uh, have added this add a crate function, which no longer exists, so I'm going to delete that. And then one little other thing I overlooked is uh, after I add my random crate, I probably want to set my next crate in variable to something like 5 to make sure we really do create a random crate every five frames instead of every frame. So there you go, that's what we're gonna get. This might have been a little confusing, so let's just review. Basically, I'm setting a counter to make sure that every five frames, I'm going to add a random crate. By adding a random crate, I'm essentially calling the same add a crate function as before, but every value I've hard coded in has been replaced with these random numbers that well, I guess they're still kind of hard-coded in, but at least every box looks different. And that's about it. So I'm pretty sure if I, unless I've overlooked something, if I hit F6 and run this thing in Flash, and look at that, I got boxes falling into the world. Notice that for the most part, they're behaving pretty well. They're looking like real boxes as they uh, start to collect and uh, run into each other and do all that stuff. And after a while, they will stop. They've stopped because I've said only add another crate to the world if the body count is less than 80. Note, by the way, this doesn't mean that there are exactly 80 boxes in there. Don't forget that there is a body for the ground object, the walls, the floor. So I guess there's something like, what, 76 boxes, 75? I don't really care too much. I don't care about the number of boxes. I just picked a number that I thought would be pretty close and look pretty good. So there you go. We got our boxes. We got a whole bunch of them. It's kind of neat when you get to watch them all fall in like this. Coming up, we will change a few of the other variables in the world just to see what it looks like when we start to fool around with things like friction or the bounciness of these objects.